right, so I'm just going to share some of the winning strategies that we used at Forte. Uh, the first one I think uh, she's touched on is um, profiling, learner profiling, but we normally do that um, on weekends or towards the end, right? Because during the course of the day, we don't group our learners. Because at the same time, if you have the ones that are weak only, you know, it gets really heavy. So sometimes um, we profile them during the weekends or towards the end of the year. So we don't profile the learners from class, right? So during class, you mix the learners so that the ones that are performing, they can leave the ones that are not. And then uh, we also do cross nights. So I've realized that we do cross nights in our district, but we don't do cross nights every weekend because I feel that it's really exhausting for learners. So what we do, we do cross nights once a term. So first term we have one cross night, second term we have one cross night, and then third term we have two cross nights for paper one and for paper two. And for final examination as well, we have a cross night for paper one and for paper two. And then we also have uh, songs. So I've seen that um, teachers are trending on TikTok, and I know that learners love that. So we try to use things that they can relate to, like your songs. So we have a song that we normally do for a DNA replication. The reason why we do that song is because DNA replication is similar to transcription. So to make learners understand and to know how to differentiate, we make one song. That is for DNA replication. <laughs> All right. So we have a song that is different every time. So what is interesting is the dances, right? <laughs> um, All right. So we do this one. So we say DNA and rhymes, DNA and rights, DNA and zips, DNA and zips. Forming two separate strands. Forming two separate strands. Forming two separate strands. Forming two separate strands. <laughs> oh, I see. Right, and then you say, okay, picking our free DNA nucleotides from the nucleoplasm. Picking our free DNA nucleotides from the nucleoplasm. I had for Right. <laughs> Okay. All right. And then we have that. And then for biological terms, um, Fozzy touched on that. It's very important for life sciences. So learners um, normally don't pay attention to biological terms. So we make it fun for them. So we do 30 seconds. So what do you do? Uh, you let them write terms for whatever topic that you are doing. Maybe for meiosis, they write maybe non-disjunction. Another one will write trisomy 21. Another one maybe will write crossing over, chiasma. And then we have two groups or whatever groups, depending on the number that you have. And then the learners must have a representative, the one who's going to actually describe the term to them without using the actual term. So you can't say, um, so chiasma, no. So you must say that uh, a point where um, a genetic material is exchanged between homologous pairs. So they have to answer to say chiasma, but you time them. So they have to have 30 seconds to do that. And then you record the scores. You can have like incentives. Maybe you can have sweets for the ones that have won, you know, just to make it interesting. So that is 30 seconds that we do. Um, and then you do team teaching. So with team teaching, you must have team teaching in your school if you have another teacher that's teaching life sciences. But not just that. You also team up with other teachers in your district and even outside. So with us, we're teaming with uh, Mem Zondi from Maroma Klobo, And we also were teaming uh, with Mem from D14 uh, from Mnube. So they she used to come and then we do cross nights uh, with her learners as well. So we did cross nights with Mem Zondi the final, for the final examination. So that also helps to to have someone with a different voice and to have kids, you know, because you know kids are very competitive, but you must create that positive competition, you know so they are together, but they want to also you know, shine amongst the others content wise though, you know and then um we also have topic tests. I think everyone is doing topic tests in our district that is very important, but now with the topic tests, I record, we record the max we record the marks and then I'll just put it there by the notice board, you know, you just introduce that. I know that it can be, you know, uh, questionable saying that you are violating the learner's rights, but you, at first, man, you, you are teachers, so you must use your, your psychology, you know, just to make under learners understand, but you make it fun, so you only have two lists. So those leagues, I would say maybe it's UEFA and PSL. So if you are in the PSL league, you must push so that you get to UEFA. So it's really, you know, it pushes them a lot. And then we also do uh, biological term tests. We do, okay, and then with the investigation, I added that as well. So last year from the diagnostic analysis, we realized that learners are battling with uh, investigative questions. So we gave them during um, the course of the year, we gave them investigative questions every now and then using different topics. So 
that is very important to look at the diagnostic analysis and see what is it that learners are battling with. And then um, we also do uh, peer teaching, so we let learners, I think he, uh, I, got, I got that from um, from Sheriff, you know, so that peer teaching, I remember he shared that strategy and I learned that from him. You do peer teaching, you let learners that are understanding the topic uh, teach uh, the others, so because we, reali we realize that sometimes learners want their peers to teach them and they understand better, so we also do that as well. Um, we try to push the syllabus as fast as we can because, you know, when you now take time uh, to teach and make learners understand, by the time you get to revision, you have less time and then they've forgotten about the topics that we did in first term. So we try to push the syllabus as fast as we can and then we have a lot of time for revision because trust me, you can say that you have taught the, the topic and you have done your job and then the learners come the end of the year, they, uh, they already forgot what is happening in Meiosis 1, but you spent a lot of time on that you know so maybe you can just look at the mic allocation as well to say I, I will spend more time on on topics that actually have a lot of marks you know there's no need for, for you to spend time on plant hormones when there's just like five seven marks in the exam right um, Right, we also did videos, this one's my colleague was helping with the vi videos and the visuals, so some learners are visual learners, so you must also accommodate those learners, so there are videos, I know that there are resources, also with YouTube, because learners are always on their phones, so I told them to um, uh, go and look at um, that uh, video of reproduction, I know we have that video, but when you say you must go and look for that, they get interesting, no wonder what's there, and then they go, I like you showing them sometimes, you must just give it to say, go and look at that video, we'll talk about this, if your school actually has Wi-Fi and your learners have phones, you can do that. Um, sharing good practice, we do that a lot in workshops, especially your batch wood. We're doing that uh, even after marking with uh, Mr. Sheriff there when we're eating meat. I think uh, there was um, our colleagues as well there. So we share like good uh, teaching practice, like your role plays, you know. So when, um, for example, you are teaching um, pupillary mechanism, so you know that normally you'll have... Can you come and assist me, ma'am? Um, I'll just show this one quickly so that you understand what I'm talking about. So normally there are those games that we play, but it's a big circle where you hold hands and then for you to have a complete circle, you do this and then you go, choose those indigenous games. I don't know if you know them. Do you know? Yes. So you normally say your hands will act as your radial muscles and whatever that your radial muscles are doing, the circular muscles do the opposite. And then what is the circle is your pupil, right? So if your, 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 if there was a third person, right, let's pretend as if I come, man. Let's not present we are here ma'am come <laughs> just quickly and then i'm about to wrap up and then we are done right so now we say our hands are radial muscles right and then whatever we are trying to do this circle is your pupil uh, your pupil right so whatever that the radial muscles are doing the circular muscles are doing the opposite we can't demonstrate the circular muscles so then if um our our radial muscles shorten or contract meaning that you are pulling them towards us what is happening to the circle it's becoming bigger right so when the radial muscles contract the circular muscles relax the pupil dilates and more light enters the eye so that is pupillary me mechanism under uh, dim light vision. So something like that. I hope you saw that. Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, there are other ones that we'll share as well. And then we also have, lastly, right, okay. Oh, the one page, we use one page for revision. And I try to refrain from using mind the gap for teaching because mind the gap omits a lot of information. I normally give it to uh, the risk learners towards the end so that they just at least get that 30%. But I don't, I, 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 we try to not give them at the beginning of the year. We use the other textbooks. I saw the one that uh, Fozzi also shared. Um, this one, uh, this one worked uh, a lot for us. This is the last one, uh, taking learners out. I know that we are financially stretched. Maybe you can try and do fundraising at your school or ask your principal or the HGP, something like that. So what we did first time, we took the top learner out with Mem. Uh, we took uh, her, her out at uh, 1947. It's a nice restaurant, a three-course meal. So you know our learners come from disadvantaged. Some of them don't even uh, know the feel of actually sitting at a restaurant. Second term, we also did that with our learner. Actually, that learner ended up getting eight distinction. Uh, he's our tax learner. And then third term, we changed things. We said we are going to take the most improved. And I tell you, colleagues, we got about 20% uh, um, improvement when we're looking at our results by just saying that, you know, learners like those uh, uh, type of experiences. So I think I've shared everything, colleagues. Thank you very much.
Thank you.